Hello everyone, uh, another update uh, initially starting with uh, Richard's case. Um, now he sent out uh, a message to his mailing list on 08th of March, 8th of March, that was Friday last week. And um, I'll just briefly scroll this here, but he's um, basically saying, you know, that he's uh, summarizing the court case again. Um, but the new thing really is that there is a transcript of the court hearing from the 29th of January um, and a link to the previous video he did and then he notes that there is a um, court hearing is a it's a case management conference and that's going to be held this Wednesday coming um, and it's meant to be one hour from 3 30 to 4 30 p.m. and that's going to be online using Microsoft Teams and um, I'm not sure if there's a link going to be published to that. Um, it doesn't mention that here, but it, maybe it will be on that page there. Um, I'm not sure though about that. So that's. Uh, but he's. Uh, what's happened here is obviously he's got a bit more um, publicity in the alternative media through Off Guardian. Uh, that's the work of Ian Davis and uh, Gemma O'Doherty who's in Ireland, has also been covering his case because she's in a similar situation. And there are some video links here in this article in the, in the update that Richard sent out. Um, Richard also mentioned that he might do some uh, live speaking events in the near future uh, as a way of raising more funds for his legal defence, uh, but he hasn't uh, done anything definite yet. So keep an eye on his website, subscribe to his uh, newsletter if you haven't already. Uh, but the other thing is you can download the uh, archive of his videos if you want. Now, I've just done this using a torrent link, which is down here. Um, you can sort of download individually as well. Uh, you can use a, a torrent client, such as Qubit Torrent, which then will, will mean that the load is not on Richard's server um, as well, if you, if you uh, are able to do that. Um, so... Um, he also mentioned the German New Medicine event. Uh, Lloyd and Danielle Bryant, who help run richplanet.net, they organised these events uh, around alternative health, holistic health, and the German New Medicine is part of that. And you can go and read about that there if you wish. Um, I've included a link to the transcript here. I haven't read all of it. It's 16,000 words, it says here. Um, I just sort of had a look at the first few pages and note that... Uh, the um, claimant's argument, which is um, being, um, they're being, uh, their solicitor is called Mr. Price. Uh, they open with a discussion of the Salman Abadi and the, how his brother was convicted of a crime. And it's all very strange and not very much to do with the Hibbert's claims initially. And that's the first few pages. I think cover that. Um, you know, but uh, you can read all of that if you want. At least it's there for the record. So we know what's been said in the court. And uh, there isn't, there aren't any reporting restrictions on that. So anybody that you, you know, want to sort of discuss this with, you've got that as a record of what was said in the court hearing, which of course uh, Martin Hibbert is not talking about now. Um, I haven't watched um, this uh, latest video of him, uh, this video of him on the this morning program. But apparently, he said some not very nice things, which could have prejudiced his case. Um, but I think, you know, I've had a few people still writing to me about the case. And this leads up me on to another point, which I just want to uh, uh, come on to. And it's in relation to um, this case. So uh, I got a message from Sean, who's over in China. And I'll read a bit more of his message here shortly. And um, why it's doing that. Um, he's asked if you can ask a quick question and he said the claim against Hall is that the expression of his views is harassment is that the that the claim hence the contrary to expectations he in fact has no legal guarantee as being in a Western democratic country of the right to such freedom of speech and self-expression and so instead he then has to prove what he's saying to be true and not just his view not having entitlement to, to, entitlement to one in order to show the evidence claimed is uh, show the claimed harassment is justified, and this is um, shown in China. 
So uh, I wrote back to Sean. I mean, Sean knows all of this. Uh, I wrote, the Hibbert's claim is not especially that RDH's views have harassed them, but that his actions have, such as parking his van near their home and filming inside it, from inside the van that is not the home, and getting no usable footage, which is how this all seems to have been laid on to Richard, and also publishing a book, etc. There is also a claim about breach of data protection, which Richard goes through in his rebuttal to the original claim, which was covered about oh, at least a year ago, I think it was. Now, the Hibbert's claims, I think, are really shaky. They can't really prove that Richard has harassed them, and I don't think that claim is very strong. But, um, you know, I don't think the case would have ever got this far if Hibbert wasn't a poster boy for the Manchester Bang. Because he is, said poster boy, of course, the laws that apply to Hibbert are different to the laws that apply to Richard. Hibbert is a friend of the state, or maybe even, you know... Uh, a stooge of the state, if you want to call him that. And, of course, RDH is an enemy of the state. And I said, I know that Sean knows this already, but it helps me to express it like this, because I think that's, that is what it boils down to. Hibbert has laws which apply to him, which are different to the laws that apply to everyone else who wants to talk against him because of the enormity of the Manchester case. And we've seen that when... You know, the judges basically said, well, I believe Hibbert, I believe what his solicitor says, and I don't need to see the CCTV footage. And Richard says, well, I need to see it to, you know, um, prove, uh, you know, their claim. But the judge denies that. So that means that Hibbert is getting special treatment by the court. It's as simple as that. So Sean wrote back, our culture and civilization are dying, bankrupt from many angles. Obviously, publishing books and videos is having a view and expressing it. The court knows this. Uh, is trash regardless of what Hall's view may be. So it's, that's what it boils down to. And then the quote from Voltaire they, there. Um, now, Sean's in China, and I think he's so he tag, tagged on to the end of this. Uh, Sean's been in China and out of China, uh, and he had some. I posted some of the stuff before from him on my website, um, which is very interesting. He said he arrived in China two weeks ago for another teaching con contract. And he says, uh, on arrival, walking off the plane near its door, an official wants to check everyone's passports before they walk down the corridors. I've seen this technique before to impress something on the mind when passengers are jet lagged and ti tired and disoriented state. It's pure theatre to presuppose that the government is important and you need its approval to proceed. Ludicrous to see if people have had the right passport, particularly after already being checked multiple times. Uh, and Sean says he gave the card at a hard time, not that he understood. The displacement of direct personal bank account pa card payments and certainly cash by a centralised phone payment system continues. The government subtly reduces card transaction machines' connectivity and reliability to create cynicism for its use and help phase it out. Nobody says anything beyond a little murmured agreement about it being more than more convenient when the contactless bank card is several times faster than getting the phone application working even the personal identification number system uh, for the card is faster so entering your pin is faster than using an app which it is and uh, he talks about some of the adherence to stipulated behavior by the people there in china and um you know, what can potentially happen, such as want to buy your groceries. Some subhuman in a tower in Beijing sees a dubious message you typed while a while ago and instead puts a block on your phone for several days. Now go away and be state-approved state good little boy or girl. So, you know, they can block you from buying things uh, using your phone. Or if they can't do that now, they're very close to being able to do that. Um and he says he works as a lecturer. Devices are now set up on the front desk in teaching rooms requiring the lecturer to scan a phone code in order to open the computer and project it screen. So, you know, if you haven't got the approved lesson content, then maybe you can't give the lecture. Um, facial recognition cameras are replacing identity cards for entrance gates and elsewhere. I have an older phone and the system won't upload my photo for the recognition system. So my manager actually asked me to buy a new phone for some enormous cost just to pass the gates, which I'm certainly not doing. Um, and he goes on and writes about some of the other aspects in China. And now he's returned there. Um, as any dissent and challenge is crushed, while background elite's position is then further entrenched and safeguarded, even in Chinese cultural terms, the government and the privileged elite are jokers 
with their constant self-conscious trickery. The people control uh, could involve less silliness and obvious fear of dislodging them from hierarchical positions. And he talks about the censorship of the web and stuff. VPN rerouting options um, are getting harder to, to make them work. So um, most officials in public capacity continue wearing face masks and plastic gloves as promoting scary faceless government authority. Underlining what a government promoted fast COVID was, I, I was asked to wear a mask in a health check centre, but when, de when declined, they let it go. So, um, yeah, Sean's sort of standing up, really. It's interesting that he's gone back there because he's had a lot of trouble there, but he, but he has. So, there you are. So, moving on to completely different things. Um, again, I get things coming up in my YouTube playlist quite a lot now. Um, and um, this one came up recently, another Versa Doco video about uh, an ancient Egyptian vase, which I think is like 3,000 years old. I forget the exact age, maybe even 5,000. So there's quite a bit of detail in this 23 minute video about how this vase is made very precisely, exceeding the tolerances in, in even modern pieces. They go to quite a lot of detail to show you this and explain this uh, and some of the... Um, sort of patterns which are encoded into the vase and then ask well how could have this have been built with hand tools you know without without they basically say that to get this amount of precision in this way with these particular features you would need a computer controlled lathe and even then the ones that we produce now which are similar to this are not quite as precise as this and this is pretty much proved you know and they they, they discuss multiple examples of this so really there's no question that they used very advanced technology to make these uh, vases here. I mean, there's no explanation for the, how they could possibly have made them with no knowledge of the wheel, you know, yet to be invented, no knowledge of pi, uh, you know, the ratio of the radius to the circumference of a circle, which is also, they must have known to, to make it with this precision. Um, so it's a very interesting video, part one of three. I'm not sure whether they're going to go with the other parts, but you can obviously subscribe to this channel and find out. So, um, yeah, definitely worth a watch. Nothing particularly new, you know, here. I mean, we've heard about all this ancient technology before, but I think the way that the evidence is prevent presented here is particularly compelling. And, uh, you know, they mentioned things like the Antikythera mechanism, which I've had the pleasure of seeing the original version of that. Well, that's only a side part of this video. So, yeah, you can you can have a, have a look at that in your own time, obviously. Uh, and then just throwing in here sort of at random almost another thing that's come up I get I've been following the sort of story with electric cars and um, this was uh, a case from uh, I don't know if there's a picture I'll try and go through this video from 2000, 2022 when I hadn't heard of this where a container ship that had I don't know about 2000 cars on it uh, a Porsche car an electric Porsche car the battery on it caught fire and the fire was so bad that it burnt through the metal of the um, ship and the ship sank. And I think somewhere here um, it actually resulted in a claim for $155 million against um Porsche because there were a number of cars on this ship now 2,000 cars and they're all sort of premium cars you know Jags and Porsches and you know there's a list in this article here um, but I'd never heard of this so you know the, obviously the, the press covers all this up because they want electric cars to be the future but it looks like as uh, this some of the other channels are saying that the whole electric car thing of course has been designed to cause the collapse of the major car industries and make the manufacture of motor cars no longer viable um, so that we all look forced to use a public transport system ultimately which of course leads to greater control um, and then kind of kind of on the opposite side of or the opposite end of things to do with transport um, then uh, we've got videos like this one um, which uh, is about the research of Thomas Townsend Brown and um, there's a, there's a, I, did, I just clicked through this video 
It looks like they've got a picture of poor Benowitz there, so it looks like they cover his case as well. I didn't watch all of this, because, and that's Bill Cooper, um, obviously. I, and I didn't watch all of this, because I skimmed through it and thought, yeah, 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 I've seen all this before. It's a very sort of snappy presentation and probably took quite a while to edit it. But, um, you know, it, it all seems quite interesting. And then at the end, the maker of this video, I'm guessing it's Jesse Michaels, Jesse Michels, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Um... He basically sets a challenge, and this this kind of interested me at the end. And he's he's going on about the Byfield Brown effect. I think he incorrectly calls it the Byfield Brown effect, which many people do, but I'm pretty sure it's Byfield Brown effect. And he says he's going to give somebody fifty thousand dollars if they can prove that the Byfield Brown effect, which is the effect of charging up an object and it being reduced in weight. Uh, if they can prove that in a vacuum, he'll give them $50,000. I'm always very suspicious of such things like this because I don't know where this sort of money comes from. Um, but anyway, uh, I decided that, I, that he put his, an email address on the screen at this somewhere at this point. I forget where it is, um, but you can find this um, in the video somewhere. Interestingly, he hasn't got the, 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 link, the email address in the description, but... Um, uh, it's something like, well, you'll see the email address. I've got it in this with the message, if you bear with me a second. Yeah, so it's uh, usaalchemy at gmail.com. You know, you can feel free to um, give this uh, guy a, uh, send him an email. And I wrote to him, dear sir, I skimmed through your video with interest because it's all about the Bifeld brown effect and all of that stuff and anti-gravity. Um, and I said, feel free to download my free book, which is the uh, Secret Space Program book, um, which covers all the Bifeld Brown effect and all the background to that. Uh, and I said, I cover Thomas Town and Brown and others you mentioned in your video in some depth. Um, and I said to him, I'm not exactly sure what your goal is or whether it's the same as mine, which is to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Uh, and I said, I'm not offering not offering any cash prizes, but I challenge you to make a follow up video where you talk about 9-11 and how the black world technology, which is likely which likely has some links to the work of Thomas Townsend Brown, was used to destroy the World Trade Center on 9-11. Did you already know this, but not cover it? If you don't know this yet, please study the videos and sli slideshows here at drjudywood.com. And if you have a genuine interest, I can probably arrange for a complimentary copy of Dr. Wood's book to be sent to you. Um, and then I said, um, this one really sorts out the fakers from the authentic people. Now, of course, as yet, I've not received a reply. I don't really expect to receive a reply. because I think it's fairly clear from that video that whilst it offers certain information, the guy's essentially a debunker if he's, he's saying he, what, he's offering $50,000 for somebody to prove this effect to him. Sounds very much like the James Randi challenge to me. I could be wrong. I could be totally wrong. Um, you know, if this guy comes back to me in the next few days, um, then great. But uh, I've seen plenty of these videos now. And most of the, uh, as you know, most of the sort of UFO community and these energy researchers, they don't talk about 9-11. They don't seem to want to know where this technology has gone and that it is real. And sadly, it's already been perverted and used as a weapon. Um, but there you are. That's just the situation we're in. And, uh, you know, we, we've all got to live with that, I suppose. So um, moving on a little further, um, a couple of days ago, I think it was uh, Thursday or something, or Friday last week, um, I got another anonymous letter in the post, and uh, it was just this typed set of sheets. I think four, I've got four pages here, four or five sides of typed text. No name on it, um, no details from where it came from, what was posted within the UK, that much was clear. And it's basically looking at some numerological facts. Um, 22 counters in Wales. 32 counties on the island of Ireland, 32 council areas in Scotland, 32 boroughs in London. The Arctic Circle is 66.6 .6 degrees. And he goes on and gives some others. Uh, this, the sports ones are quite interesting. Um, and you can read those, for example, the sixes in darts, uh, eight, 18 degrees is each sector on a dartboard, each segment on a dartboard. Um, and, he, and he goes through the numerology, roulette as well, football, I won't read all of this out, take a little bit long, 
Um, snooker, 22 balls, 15 rounds, 1 plus 5 equals 6. 6 colours, 6 box, 6 pockets. And 36 shots to clear up a 6, six by 6. So that's quite interesting. Also some quite interesting numerology there, some of which I knew, some of which I didn't. But I think I will say immediately, some of this is to do with, particularly with this one, yeah, we've got the, of course, the armistice day was 11 a.m. on the 11th of the 11th, this sort of thing. Uh, certain correspondences in the body um, and stuff. And 666 is in every barcode. And, um, yes, yeah, some stuff about fairy tales. Um, and all this sort of thing. And, yeah, so there's various numerological things going on here. And there we are. Um, so, you can look at that and study that uh, if you're interested. But this led me back to a posting I made a few years ago um, when I was looking into this numerological stuff a little bit, just from the point of view of coding, actually. And um, basically, I decided that I would try and write a program which um, calculated the probabilities of numbers adding up to 11 or 13. Any number, you know, you pick between one and a million. Do, do, if you take all the digits, does it add up to 11 or 13? Um, and so there's this this program that I wrote here, and you know, you can sort of run this calculation here. If you just press OK a few times, just ignore that. It will um, it will actually calculate uh, and then put some numbers in a box here. I think if you do cancel, it should come up in the box. I think. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. And it shows you the number of numbers um, that um, where the digits add up to um, 11 or 13 or 9. But what you'll see is this figure of 11.11% keeps recurring in, in the calculations. And I noticed while I was doing this that... Uh, one small but obvious thing that's come out of this now is how the numbers 9 and 11 could be seen to be encoded into our uh, base 10 number system. In other words, 9 times 1.1111 equals 10. And then, of course, 9 times 11.111 equals 100. So uh, that's that's kind of interesting. I never really noticed that before. Um, so does this mean that there is a sort of higher order of things going on, which is somehow um, appears in mathematics as well? And many people would say that's true. And uh, I remember reading a book called God's Secret Formula. I'll see if I can find the Amazon link uh, while I think of it. God's Secret Formula is formula deciphering the riddle of the universe and prime number code. And uh, quite an old book now, but it's quite interesting. Somebody gave me a copy of this and I did read through it. And there's some quite interesting stuff in there about uh, uh, how many things are in trilogies and this sort of thing. So, uh, you know, the, you might be able to find a PDF of that or whatever, but uh, it's, it's um, not too bad. It's not too technical or anything like that. So it's quite interesting. Oh, it looks like it can be obtained fairly cheaply. <laughs> Interestingly, the card cover is much cheaper than the paperback. Um, so I'll leave you with that thought. Uh, definitely something in the numerology. I'm not going to go into it here. You know, we know various things about the numerology of 9-11 and 7-7 and all of that. It's all very strange, and it does appear to be some sort of signalling or occult system. And actually, what I meant to say um, a few minutes ago is going back to that um, chap who was doing the anti-gravity video. He was using um, this one here. He was using an email address of um, usa.alchemy at gmail.com. So that made me quite suspicious that he knows more than he lets on. Um, but moving back to the numerology... Uh, the other thing that came up on my YouTube list, it's not really anything to do with con conspiracies or anything like that, uh, not even particularly numerology, but this video is a very Tassium channel. It's, it's very mainstream, or very much mostly mainstream. Occasionally he'll dip into alternative topics on the very sort of edges of what he does. But um, if you're interested in mathematics, uh, he talks about perfect numbers, and I just found that video quite interesting. I watched it recently, so I thought I'd uh, put that here while I'm thinking of it. And then finally, to finish off uh, this video update, um, I was sent this video by Rob uh, from 5th of March. 
and it appears to be one of these rockets uh, missile tests or something producing a very strange sight in the night sky uh, this was picked up on some uh, you know um, security camera or something or door camera in Lapland in Finland and it's quite interesting to watch but it's very reminiscent of the Norway spiral and there's some clips of that from 2009 uh, and that was supposedly a missile um, you know gone out of control ah, was it I mean there was a whole debate about it then a big hoo-ha and again what I'm going to just uh, detour into again while I think of it is the um, article by Richard C Hoagland I'll just get that so Richard C Hoagland did a series of three articles about this very interesting lots of pictures and stuff and this this really is what it looked like it was an extraordinary thing um, now of course you obviously we take everything Hoagland says with a large dose of uh, salt and uh, etc etc but um, what it alerted me to was that he he's apparently lost his original domain name which was enterprisemission.com and I've linked to that quite a few times on my website and that's now become enterprisemission.org so if you have looked at this website before then uh, be aware of that it's, it is he's got some very good stuff on he's put a lot of work into many of these articles I don't agree with everything he says but nevertheless uh, there is some very good stuff here on uh, you know things like this and some of the uh, um, NASA anomalies and stuff but Hoagland of course is a strange Apollo apologist uh, and goes along with the um, official narrative of Apollo so uh, this video is long enough already uh, and so I'm going to end it here and say thank you very much for watching and for your support and I wish you well and let's wish Richard well uh, in his uh, court case and I'll talk to you again uh, before too long.